In today's video, we'll go into depth on an election protection action that nearly everyone can do and really everyone must. It's about taking photographs of poll tapes on election night. Now, you may not even know what poll tapes are, and that's okay because you're about to learn. This video is drawn from a recent training done over Zoom with a number of panelists as guest experts, and we not only cover the practical aspects of how and why to take photos of poll tapes, but also share more of the nuances and complexities of the election process so that you can understand the greater context and how this might apply to you and your work. This training is divided into chapters and you can find those at the timeline of the video down at the bottom of the screen. If you want to, you can scroll through the most relevant parts for you or go back and watch them again because we do get pretty technical in this training. And if we haven't met, I'm Emily Levy, founder and director of scrutineers.org, which is a community of people dedicated to election protection. Please support our work by liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification button so that you'll be notified when we post further trainings and updates. You can also consider sharing this with others who you think will be interested. You can find us at scrutineers.org to join in our efforts. It's not too late to protect the elections. Any resources mentioned in today's video are linked into the description box below. So let's get started. Thanks for watching. Welcome everyone to today's presentation. Welcome everyone to today's training. A quick election protection action nearly everyone can and must do. How and why to take photos of poll tapes on election night. Since it took me almost an hour to say the title, I think we'll just call it a day. The training's over now. Thank you all for coming. Um, I'm Emily Levy and I'm here today to present, to host this training. And we have one, some wonderful panelists with us today as well. So I wanna thank you so much for being here. Um, I wanna thank you all so much for being here. There are many places you could be today and things you could be doing. And whether you're here watching us live or watching the recording, I really appreciate you taking the time to learn what we're going to be presenting to you today. You're in the right place. You are in the right place if you wanna do your part to make sure our votes are counted accurately. And you're in the right place if you can be available at a polling place a few, for a few minutes or more on election night. And you'll be, to do this, you'll generally be outside the polling place after it's closed. So social distancing, or as my mother calls it, socialist dancing, which is the same letters rearranged, should not be a problem. Um, and you're in the right place if you want to help make our elections more secure. And even if you're busy now, up until the election campaigning or doing get out the vote work, you are in the right place to learn about something you can do on election night when that work is completed. My name is Emily Levy and I am the founder and director of scrutineers.org, which is an online community of people working to protect the voters and protect the votes. We are a nonpartisan organization. We don't support any candidate or political party. We are working for fair elections. We're all about making sure that everyone who should be eligible to vote gets to vote and that all the votes are counted accurately. Our website is a membership site where you can learn about election protection. You can connect with other people doing work in your area of geographically or on the issues you want to focus on and then and you can take action so later i'll be in, inviting you to join us at scrutineers.org back at the at the end of of this training um, i want to give one little advertisement before we move on with today's training we actually have another training coming up on this Sunday, which is especially for people who are going to be working as poll workers in this fall's election, in the general election. And what we're gonna be doing on that training is training poll workers to use the unique position they have of being inside the polling place, including before it opens and after it closes, to be the eyes and ears of election protection while they're doing that work, to make sure that the laws and procedures are being followed. So we are hearing a lot this year about, um, so we're hearing a lot this year about attempts to keep voters from voting. 
make different ways it's being made harder than it has to be for people to vote by mail to protect their health, including the slowing down of the postal service, closing of polling places, even physical threats against voters, misinformation, all kinds of things. And these problems happen, some of them happen every year, some of them are brand new this year, and they're all certainly magnified in this election. Another problem that we hear far less about is vote counts that don't accurately represent how the voters voted. And the panelists on the call today are people who work on that end of the election protection picture. And many of us have been doing that work for nearly 20 years. I don't think anyone's been doing it for longer than 20, but many of us are approaching 20 years. And until this election cycle, frankly, it seemed like the public did not want to know about problems with the security of our elections. This year, that's different. Um, but even though people are more interested this year, there's a ton the public doesn't know. And so I'm gonna say a phrase to you and I want you to type into the chat the first thing that comes to your mind, election security, hacking, votes, paper ballots, voting machines, ballot protection, vulnerable, Russia, fraud, voting machines, hacking, Russia, penetrable, dubious, locked ballot boxes, backdoor rigging, partisan cheating. These are, yeah, yeah. What, what I've noticed in kind of general conversations with people who maybe aren't interested enough to, to come yet to a presentation like this is that for most people, it's either the phrase foreign interference or the Russians that comes to mind. And the reality is that our elections are vulnerable not only to interference by people from outside our borders, but also from people inside the country, including people who work from, for the voting machine companies and even our election officials and their employees. Now, I do wanna say that most people who work running our elections are honest and really dedicated and are doing that work because they truly believe in democracy and they want to be of service. But unfortunately, that's not true of all of them. Another thing most people don't know about election security is that there are very clear actions that people can take, even you can take, to make elections more secure. And so today we're going to be teaching you exactly how to do one of those actions, which is photographing poll tapes outside of polling places on election night. And it's okay if you don't even know what poll tapes are, we're going to cover that. So I want to speak to a moment to people, those of you who are volunteering for a candidate or doing get out the vote work either phone banking or postcarding or in some places maybe there's even door to door get out the vote work I don't know if that's happening this year that is all of that is really really important work I am so glad that you're doing it and that work ends on election night which is exactly when you're needed to do what we're going to be do, teaching you to do today and in fact some of you will probably already even be at polling places because of those other volunteer jobs you're doing there is other election security work that happens in the days and weeks that follow the close of voting on election night. And so I'm also going to share with you not so much about what those things are just in the interest of time, but how you can get more information about what more you can do to help protect the vote count. So and um, if you find today's training useful, I really hope that you'll share the recording with the other groups you're working with on campaigning, get out the vote work, et cetera. Et cetera. And again, we're nonpartisan. So regardless of what party you might be working for, um, it's fine to share this information. All right, so here we go. Let's start with what's a poll tape. And Melissa, will you show that slide, please? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so a poll tape is printed, is a, this cash register, register receipt looking thing that's printed out from most kinds of voting machines at the end of the night. It's printed out by the person running the polling place, so which is often called the inspector. It looks like a cash register receipt and it has on it um, a bunch of information at the top identifying where it's from, how many people voted on that voting machine, and also how many votes each candidate got, and if there are issues, propositions, levies on the ballot, questions, they're called different things in different states, how many yes, yes votes and no votes for each of those. And these are made both by the kinds of machines that scan votes on paper ballots and on touchscreen voting machines where people are actually touching a computer screen to vote. Okay. Um, 
due to either error or criminal activity after the votes go from the polling places to the county office where they're combined with votes from all the other voting machines and polling places and early voting and absentee vote or vote by mail voting and all that. Um, sometimes the vote totals from a specific precinct will change when they're combined with the other votes. This absolutely shouldn't happen. And if it does, it's the poll tape that's correct, not the total that's reported later. So that's why we need photos of poll tapes to document the original count. And that's why we need you to take those photos. So here to show you two very short video clips illustrating why this work is so important is my colleague Susan Pinchon of Validate the Vote USA and Florida Fair Elections Coalition. Welcome Susan, let me unmute your line and um, please introduce the videos. Thank you, Emily. Thank you all for being here today. Um, this poll tape verification photography is really important, and I hope this following little video clip, it's just one and a half minutes long, will make that point. So with no further ado, because I think it explains itself, go ahead, Emily, you can play the clip. Thank you. Susan Pinchon realized that elections were at risk when she began investigating the last presidential election in Volusia County, where she lives. She even found votes in the trash behind the elections office. These records should never have been thrown away. Federal law says they must be kept for at least 22 months. Four years on, and Susan Pincham still has them in her office. We actually have these tapes from the same precinct with two completely different vote totals on them. The first results tape printed showed 880 votes and the second results tape showed 420 votes. These two different results from the same precinct show why Susan Pinchon is so determined to follow the vote count. In fact, it was citizens looking at these records, asking to see these records that brought to the attention of the elections office that they had recorded the wrong vote total on their statement of votes cast, the final election results, and caused them to change it back to the correct total. That, that's it for that clip. So, uh, the, Sancho, sorry, the so we don't play this one yet. Oh dear. Sorry, sorry. My apologies, my apologies. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to just a quick, quick um, few seconds uh, intro. This is a clip of one of my personal heroes, Ion Sancho, the former supervisor of elections in Leon County. Um, who allowed a hack of his voting system. But this is a different clip. This is something that's going to show you yet another reason why this poll tape photography project is so important and why you can contribute, how you can contribute to the security and the accuracy and the verification of this election. Mm -hmm. So if you, yep, go ahead and start the clip. Susan, Susan you said that, that Ian allowed a hack of his election. I just wanna make it clear that that was for demonstration purposes, not to actually change the results results of the election. Oh, thank you, Emily. That's a good clerk. And this is not that hack. This is just a demonstration of what can be done at the central computer um, and why those poll tapes are so important. So go ahead. There you go. Ion Sancho, the supervisor of elections in Leon County, Florida, has the same system. He agreed to show us how to manually enter vote totals. This procedure is an emergency procedure only an emergency procedure. The system works by first entering the total number of votes cast, followed by a breakdown of the vote totals for each candidate. This means that there is a basic check for error or fraud. TJ is now removing the 25 votes for the first four candidates on this race, and he will give 100 votes to one candidate in this race. He's going to add 100 votes to the totals for Senator John McCain. In other words, the Premier system allows election officials to have the ability to switch the candidates' votes, either by mistake or intentionally. The only way to catch these errors is to check the original results or poll tapes printed out in the polling precinct. As long as the poll tapes originally existed from the precinct, this is not an effective way to 
affect the outcome of the election because the paper tape printed that evening at the proper precinct would make these figures a lie. This is the poll tape, the record of the votes cast in each precinct. Because they are printed out the moment voting closes, poll tapes are usually the most reliable record. Okay, so I think those two tapes start to give a good, a good indication of why this project is so important. So, so glad you're all here and I'll turn it back over to Emily. Thank so, you. Susan, would you please tell people what the name of the film is that those that, that came from? And we'll send out a link for people who want to watch the whole documentary, which is about 22 minutes long, I think, in the follow-up email that we send you, which is also going to include all the other links we share on the call today and the link to watch the recording of this call in case you want to see part of it again or share it. Uh, yes, thank you, Emily. It, that's a little film called Protecting Democracy. It was done by the same people who did Hacking Democracy, um, Russ Michaels and Simon Artizoni, and um, it's on Vimeo. So if you go to Vimeo and just do a search for Protecting Democracy, I think it's the second choice that comes up. And it's, it's a lot about Florida, a lot about poll tapes, a lot about election problems. It's pretty interesting, actually, even though it was done a few years ago, it's all it's still relevant today. Thank you so much. Thanks, so Emma. hopefully now you understand why it's so important that we have this documentation, these photographs of poll tapes. But what what difference can it really make if we do have this documentation? Can it really, can it really matter? So, um, and is there any reason in places to, to do it in places that aren't the battleground states or don't have a close race that's getting national attention? The answer to that question is yes. And um, to, to give you more detail and show you what can really happen when we do this kind of work, I'd like to introduce you to Benny Smith to tell a, a quick story. Benny is a hero of mine, both because of what you're about to hear and also because of something bigger that he did that we actually don't have time to talk about today, but you can learn about in Scrutineers if you choose to join, because I actually have interviewed him about it there. Um, before this story happened, Benny was a person like you and me, a community member like you and me, interested in elections, but without any official role. Now he's an election commissioner in Shelby County, Tennessee, which is where Memphis is. Welcome, Benny. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Emily. So a um, so quick story about Shelby County. Um, we have some interest in politics in Shelby County. Um, we had Republican sweeps of all of our uh, countywide races. I think and, we have a and, slide of, of kind of what the typical elected officials in Shelby County used to look like. Right. Kelly. You're going to put it up. Yeah. So we would we would have a Republican sweep of all of our countywide races. And it's a predominantly Democrat county as a predominantly African-American county. But um, there were equal numbers of lawsuits for every name you see on this. There was an equal lawsuit of, of candidates uh, suing about the election returns. Uh, and I was approached by candidates and I offered to look at the software when I discovered I, I didn't see these videos at the time. And it's so, so phenomenal to see it now. But I discovered that the totals were only committed. The only totals that were committed on election night were at the precinct level through these poll tapes. So I literally just went to a, a precinct, um, a high trafficked area, and I took a picture of a poll tape and I recorded on election night that there were 548 votes. Uh, and later, about three or four days later, when they released the unofficial totals, that total had decreased from 548 to 330. And that is significant because 40 percent of the votes in this precinct, it was a predominantly black precinct uh, and there were more precincts. But 40 percent of this particular precinct wasn't counted. Uh, I gave that poll tape to a candidate uh, and, and then a commissioner. Uh, and that that candidate went and sued with just that poll tape. And the judge basically said somebody's got some explaining to do. Uh, and about a month later, the administrator who was conducting the elections, despite everybody trying to get him to re resign, he got a vote of no confidence. They wanted him fired. They wanted him investigated. They said his thumb had his thumb on the scale. Uh, he retired. And that a month was for later. a long time before this, that people were saying those. Yeah, things, it's about right? uh, almost seven or eight years. And this this guy, he decided to retire a month later. Uh, and the 2018 election came around about uh, four years later. And there was a complete change in the demographics of who got elected there. And it was more reflective slide. of the electorate. 
Uh, and uh, this is typically what you would see in in the voting populace. And the representation of those people were a lot like the voting bloc. And these were the same voters that were electing these Republican sweeps at the same time. That story gets me every time I hear you tell it, tell it, Benny, that the change that happened in the county as a result of your choice to photograph poll tapes, to check it, the poll tape numbers against the official results, and to take action about what you found is, is really profound and moving. Thank you so much for being here to tell us about it and for the work that you do. Thank you. So folks, this is why we need you and we need everyone to photograph or take video of poll tapes on election night at one or more polling places where you live. It is one of the quickest and easiest actions people can take to, to protect the vote count. And it's also one of the most powerful, which is really cool that you don't have to do the hardest stuff to get the, the most impact. So far, we've covered why poll tapes are so important for protecting the election and um, what we're going to go on to cover is how to find out where and when to take pictures or video of poll tapes, what equipment you'll need and how to get good images, how to share your photos with election protection groups prepared to analyze the data you've captured. So you don't all have to be Benny doing all the parts. You can do just the photographing part. That's fine. How to volunteer to help with data analysis if you'd like to do that, how to connect with others working on this project, and how to find out about other action you can take to protect the vote. So you're going to hear briefly from a bunch more people today, like you've already heard from Susan and Benny, each of whom is involved in at least one part of the project. So I know this has the potential of being confusing. So we're going to walk through these stages one at a time using this diagram. And um, I thanks to Deepak Puri, one of our speakers today, for letting me adapt his diagram. Um, and we're going to just go through and highlight each step as we're on it. Um, we're going to walk you through all of these parts. But really, this is a relatively simple thing to do. So basically, what it involves is you snapping photos or videos of the poll tapes and uploading them after you've taken them. So these second and third steps of the process, the po photograph poll tapes and upload photos, are the two steps that we're absolutely asking you to do. And then the, the other steps that are shown here um, are either optional or they'll be done by other people. And we just want you to understand them so that you see how the whole picture fits together. So in case you haven't guessed already, this training is that step one of the diagram, the gathering volunteers part. Um, so now let's move on to the take step two, which is the taking photos part. So will you show that on the diagram, Melissa? Just to help people see that we're moving through it. And then um, our next panelist is Ray Lutz of Citizens Oversight. So the next slide, please. So Ray Lutz of Citizens Oversight, which is a group out of San Diego, California. And Ray is gonna be sharing with you his new online tool that will help you find out where to go to photograph poll tapes. So let me make sure that you're unmute. You can unmute, Ray. Uh Welcome and thank you so much for being here. Can, can you let me share my screen, please? You should be able to share your screen. Okay. Oh, good. Now working. Oh, good. Um, thank you very much. And wow, this is great. I thank you, Emily, and everyone else. This is a great introduction so far. Um, I'm really glad to be able to be here and participate in this. Um, so I'm just going to so, run through a few top things here before we get to that one uh, question that Emily asked um i'm not going to so go I, I know that crowdwatch really does a lot of things and okay, we, but you, let me emily you, let me do my presentation i'm going to get to what you want so my background is technical i'm not going to go into that but uh, sometime i'm going to go through the poll tapes gathering project the the high points from my point of view and uh proposed standard data format that i proposed with the group that we had set up to try to harmonize and, and be able to to put these things together and then CrowdWatch, I'm going to handle at the very end. Okay. So we already learned about what this poll tapes project is. Um, I just want to mention this does not work for vote by mail. Okay. We don't have any poll tapes for vote by mail. Oops. Uh, and um, I'm in editing mode here. And um, it can't detect hacks of the machines uh, or uh, things that happen. Um, you know, before that polling place report is generated. So there are some 
some limitations, so it doesn't actually work in all states like we would like it to. Uh, we did try to, to um, uh, find out which states would be most important for especially the presidential contests, which are, um, you know, the Electoral College makes it so that some states are really the battleground states. And there are about a dozen, um, but Arizona has no in-person voting, so there is no poll tapes to collect there. And in many other states, it's going to be minimal this time if vote by mail is used very extensively. Uh, however, it's still an important thing to do, so I would not write it off at all. Um, and uh, I think that you're going to probably go over the legal issues of getting some of these tapes in the states. It's different in every state. Um, and so then in the end, especially for the presidential contest, we're going to uh, have probably one key state or two that are really important to dig into. So you may be collecting data and then, gee, no one did anything with it. Don't worry about that. We have to collect the data. We have to be there and, and eyes open and make sure that they know that we're watching them. Very important because if they know that we're doing this project, they probably won't try to cheat at all, at least in this way. Um, then within the state, you can dig down into which counties and it, it follows the Pareto principle, which is this 80-20 rule. Essentially, um, in those top about a dozen states, we have about 237 or so counties, which are the 80% of the voters. Okay, so you don't have to do most of them. I'm just showing a sample of Florida here where they have 87 counties really only needed to do 21. This is for the for the presidential contest only. Now, this, this poll tape thing is important even at a local level and so forth. So you still may wanna do it even if, it's, if you're not looking at it this way, okay? Now, um, how many polling places do we need to get? This again, for the presidential contest, which everybody is so worried about. Um, we can get randomly selected. If we randomly select the, the places, then we can get a good assurance and, um, since this is a statewide contest, the presidential race is a statewide contest for those electorals uh, votes. Uh, we um, can look at just a sample and, and, and you can go by how many of the precincts might be hacked. So we're assuming that, that our adversary is intelligent. They're gonna try to concentrate their hack in just a few precincts and get away with it and then leave the rest unaltered. Um, and if you do that, uh, you only need, as you can see here, and I think 20% is a good number to, to think about is how many might be hacked. You only need 14 precincts in whatever area you're doing. Um, doesn't matter how big, actually, as long as you do them randomly. However, um, due to local races and other things, I think it's still wise to look at this as at a county level and try to do at least one, at least one in every county. And 14 is a good number, but I think like 28 or 30 is a, is a better number per county if we had all possible. Um, now, can you get them? I think Emily is probably going to cover this. Uh, they could be posted all night in some places. Uh, other areas require that you're right there, right when they close, that you have to be right there ready to do it. And you have to be let in maybe at the right time. Uh, it's been a good idea to keep the law, a written version of the law in your pocket so that you can assert your rights. And, um, and some places don't make them at all. They're gonna make it really hard on, on us to do this. Now, finally, uh, just a couple more things here. I'm gonna ask you to post. skip this part about file format. This is more detail than we want right here. And well, to let me just say it really quick. Anybody that doesn't wanna hear this can just skip. Okay, you you've can, got about two you, minutes left. If you make the file format, um, as opposed like state and then county and then precinct as the leader, then we can put them all together because you can compare them yourself. You don't have to necessarily contribute them. You can compare them yourself in your area and see what, how it's going. Just get them yourself and, and get the report and check them. Um, I recommend that as much as possible, we distribute this out and don't rely upon any one group or, or thing. And uh, we're contributing CrowdWatch, which is a smartphone app that can help you get to the place. It's a new interface, but uh, we have the concept of watch points, uh, which is a low, uh, which we load up in advance. Essentially, you take the picture, upload it to the cloud, 
and then we process it later as a crowdsource processing. Um, it's a general purpose application that we started before this um, pull tapes project. Um, we really started so, to- Ray, uh, excuse me for interrupting. You've got project. about one minute left and we haven't started the topic that I asked you to cover. And it, this is all really important stuff. And I'm happy to include your, your slides in the follow-up email if you'd like me to. I thought we did. I, you said where to go to get them. I'm saying is that- we So, need so to how to can people county. use CrowdWatch to find out where the polling places are? Okay, well, CrowdWatch has a concept of watch points, which are the locations to where you collect the data. And when you go into the application, the first thing you do is to um, say which project you're on. Um, and this will be the poll tapes project. And then it will um, tell you the watch points that are closest to you. Um, the, and how uh, can people find CrowdWatch? How can people get? Yeah, so CrowdWatch is, um, is is a smartphone app. You can get it at either the uh, Android or it's going to be on iPhone hopefully before then, but it'll be at uh, crowdwatch.org. Um, let me put down here another another link for people. Um, so we can actually, we'll, we'll, we can include the links in the follow-up email too. Thank you so much, Ray. Okay. I, I, I appreciate your presentation and we can include whatever details of this you want in the follow-up email that goes out to everyone who's registered. Thanks so much. You can also often get information about where the polling places are in your in your county on your county election website. So that's another option if um, if it, if your places aren't listed in CrowdWatch or you choose not to use that app. So one of the most important things is to make sure that you get good enough images or video for them to be usable. So to talk to you about that, about how to get good images or video, we have with us today Dij Masser Fry, who's the CTO of democracycounts.org, which is a member organization of scrutineers that's developed an app that you can actually use to take video of poll tapes. Welcome, Dij. Let me make sure you're unmuted. All right. Can you hear me? We can. Excellent. Thank you. And I'll go ahead and start sharing. That works. Okay. Let me know. You, you're able to see the uh, presentation? Yes. Excellent. Okay. So um, what we're going to talk about right now is how to photograph and how to take video uh, of poll tapes and, and get good results. Um, I'm sorry. I need to interrupt for a minute because Ray, mm -hmm. I, I apologize for this. Ray made me realize that I had forgotten to say that in most states, it's required that after the poll tapes are printed out, they be posted outside of the polling places. So often they're taped to the door or to the inside of the window so that people can see them in public. That's not yeah. true everywhere. And we'll be giving you some information later about to help you figure out where the, whether it's true where you live. Okay, I'm That's sorry right. about yeah, that. I, a crucial piece. No, no, no problem. That's important, and uh, it'll it'll come up in this presentation as well. It's important that if you're going to do this project, that you uh, you might need to do a little research or hook up with a group that's doing it in your area, so you're familiar with the laws and prepared. Um, the first and most important thing to getting good tapes and video is to practice. Uh, you can use this link here to a PDF where you can print your own poll tape. It's about three or four feet long. Uh, it's just baked data. It looks like what you see there on the right. And you can use that to take photos or video, uh, share with your friends. Um, you know, it's just, it's re I cannot stress how important it is to practice. And you'll see some examples that clearly people haven't practiced in a bit. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's readable, then it's good. So I'm gonna give you a bunch of tips and stuff, but if at the end of the day it's readable, you know, that's, that's the most important thing. So, um, you know, just use your judgment and um, make sure it's just readable. That's all that's really important. But here are tips to, to get you there, um, usually getting close. And I'm gonna show you some images in a minute, but these are, the, these are the most important things. Get close enough, fill the frame with the, uh, with the pull tape edge to edge if possible. Um, don't leave space around the, the pull tape if it's, um, you know, it's just wasted space. You're gonna to wanna to go from top to bottom. There's header information at the very top of the, the pull tape, which is very critical to understanding the context of the contests that are within the pull tape. If you just get the contest and you don't get the header, we almost cannot use that information because we won't know where it, where it comes from. So, so get important. the top and get the bottom, which has signatures and actually makes the pull tape official. And those are really important points. Um, be authentic. So don't, don't edit your photos or videos. Um, you know, if it ever came to it, these videos and, and photos could be used in court. And if they've been doctored that, you know, that, that creates doubt about their authenticity. So don't, 
don't mess with the photos, just send them up as is. Um, also, record at location. There, some people have moved uh, pole tapes to better places to make um, to make their recordings. Unfortunately, you know, again, when they're tagged with GPS, then it looks like they've been moved, and you know, again, it affects their authenticity. You know, where they moved and doctored, they, you know, that's a that's a question that you have to worry about. So those are the kind of the big tips there. But let's get into some examples and some real world situations that are going to be kind of stressful. Um, here's a sample from 2016 Florida. Um, you can see these pull tapes hanging from a window here. These happen to be on the outside, subject to the elements. Um, this, is, this is what it could look like in your area. I've heard Texas, for example, has 90 contests. These are going to be huge pull tapes. I don't know what it's going to be like in your areas, but you need to be prepared. Um, one thing is that taking photos can be, you know, is a simple act, but when you have a long pull tape like this, uh, you really need to worry about organizing them. Ray talked about some tips for organizing photos a minute ago. I'll talk about a little bit as well, but um, the important thing is that you, you, you keep pretty well organized if you're taking photos. If you're working with a team, um, and there's a number of teams that will be speaking today, um, follow their instructions. So I'm gonna give you some tips and things, but I want you to follow their instructions if you're working with them because that way they'll be prepared to use whatever it is that you produce. Um, full disclosure, I created the app Actual Vote, which is a tool that you can use to create videos and upload them very easily. And when you do that, I'll be sharing the data that you collect with the teams uh, that ask for it. And it'll also be available publicly as well. Um, so I'll, I'm a little video biased, but um, you know, at the end of the day, what I really care about is just getting out there and, and collecting some good data. So. We'll talk about both photos and videos. I realize I'm going quickly. There'll be some Q&A at the end here. So um, we'll, we'll definitely get to your questions in a minute or a few minutes. So taking photos, if you're gonna take photos of long pole tape, you're gonna wanna tile them in such a way that you can see the tops and bottoms of the, of the preceding and following um, pole tape sections. Can you finish up in about 30 seconds? Oh boy, we're gonna we're gonna uh, you're gonna want to organize those so that uh, you can if you're not gonna upload them right away, you're gonna want to put them into folders or name them like race suggested with some sort of sequence so you can keep them straight later. Believe me, you'll take a lot of photos and they will get very disorganized and hard to use. Use portrait again. Practice. If you're gonna do video, you're gonna want to start at the top. You want to pause over each section. Pause over the contest. Pause over the header. Pause at the bottom. And again, practice. Here's an example photo that somebody took. It's a good photo. It's clearly visible. You, you know, they, they went edge to edge. That's, that's a great photo. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I will take a quick moment to show you what a good video looks like. This is done with actual vote and it's just a sample of um, with, with a fake polling tape, but it gives you an idea of edge to edge, move slowly and then pause over individual uh, sections just long enough so you can read them. You don't have to take too much time. That's the idea. It's very readable. You're going to have to worry about uh, light. Um, there's another example here you can see in this one. They didn't go edge to edge. It's dark, but they did use a flash. Um, they I need you to, to wind up. I, I know this is right, really important. And it, yep. Okay. Just a, another example of some bad, uh, you know, again, if they practiced, it, these would have been usable. As is, they're not usable. You'll have the links to this presentation, so you'll be able to look at all the examples that are on here. So even though we didn't get to them right now, you'll have time to get to them later. Thanks, Ellen. Thanks so much. And we will absolutely send out a link to your presentation in the follow-up email. So, um, and people will want to review it again right before they do the photographing. Or, absolutely, or video practice, taping. practice, practice, please. Great, thank you so much. Um, so a lot of times when you go to photograph pull tapes, you will be outside a closed building with no one else around, but sometimes a poll worker will be there and won't understand what you're doing or why, and they might get nervous or even about what you're doing there or even try to stop you. So um, to talk with you briefly about that and about knowing your rights, I want to introduce to you, reintroduce to you Susan Pinchon, um, just to take a quick moment or two to tell you about how you can find out information about what your rights are in your state. Welcome back, Susan. Hi again, Emily. Hello, everybody. So the statutes are different. The laws are different in every state. So I'm not going to try to cover that here. But I will tell you that on our website, validatethevoteusa.org, and don't forget the USA, um, 
By the beginning of next week, we will have the statutes posted for the battleground states. <clears throat> Some of the individual states like Lynn Bernstein in North Carolina, and she'll be speaking to you soon, already has that done for her state. Um, part of the, so part, we will also have um, a bank of 350 attorneys. Maybe we won't have all of them, but, but they are offering volunteers from Reclaim Our Vote so that if somebody does have any problem at a polling place, they, they should be able to get legal help. Also, it's good to take a copy of the statute from your state once they are posted on our website. They may also be at smartelections.us. Other um, On our website, we also have a list of other groups who are doing this around the country, and they may have their statutes posted already. So they're at, anyway, by next week, you'll be able to see those. And, um, and don't be intimidated. This is your right as a citizen. So once you see in the law for your state what your legal right is, then you have a right to do that. And, and as you can see, it's an important project and um, just follow up with the laws. What Dij was talking about was so important, getting this right. It, it doesn't do any good to film a tape and then not be able to use it. So go back and look at his, review his points. And as he said, practice, because you think it's gonna be really easy, but when it's dark and, uh, or there's reflection. So take a cash register receipt and do a little practicing with your cell phone. And we will get those laws to you, out to you so that you'll have access to them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. So, and we will give you again, the link to Susan's site and in this follow-up email. I know that it's a lot to absorb. So we're gonna have kind of a review for you there. So now we've covered the taking photos or videos part, and we're ready to move on to uploading your photos. So why are you uploading them? And let's, can you show that, that stage in the, in the process just to help us keep track of where we are? If you just keep the photos in your phone or videos, they're not really gonna help anyone. So the idea is to either yourself do the analysis, look at the, the, at the precinct level results when they're announced by your county and compare them carefully to the numbers on the poll tapes, or to share them with groups that are organizing to do that kind of work and analyze what's going on. So these are groups that know how to pursue justice also if the totals don't match. There are a few choices of how to share your videos with an election protection group, and we're gonna do quick demos of each one. So what I want you to do here, because you do have choices, is to try to get a sense of which one looks like it'll work best for you, and remember the name of it, and then again, you'll have the link in your email. So first, I wanna introduce Michelle Michael from Protect Our Votes, who's gonna show you their photo finish tool and um, share with you why that would make a good option for some of you. So welcome, Michelle, I'm so glad you're here. Well, thank you. And welcome to everybody out there. Um, I'm gonna show you how to upload poll tape photos in the Photo Finish project. And this is um, a poll tape review project of Protect Our Votes. And I have a um, presentation here. So I just want to tell you a few things about Protect Our Votes as an organization. And um, we have um, a group, we are a group of concerned citizens that are from various backgrounds and we are election integrity advocates. And tonight we've prepared a short video for you that um, will show you how to upload your pull tape photos through the photo finish project. So I'm just gonna roll the tape on that right now. Great, thank you. Hello. My name is Jenny Cohn and I'd like to welcome you to our short video on how to upload a precinct pull tape. This is what a pull tape looks like. This is our uploader, which can be found on protectourvotes.com backslash photo hyphen finish. You simply select the photo of the pull tape from your photo library and type in the precinct name and the county where you took the photo. Then press upload file and the uploader begins working to upload your photo to our internal database. You can upload more than one picture at a time or a video. Thank you for participating in Photo Finish. 
that's basically our very simple uploader and you can upload videos, um, you can upload pull tapes, you can upload multiple photos at any time. Um, and then those go into our back office database where we review those and uh, begin the analysis process. So I'd like to thank you. Enjoy the rest of the pull tape training and I'll be back later. Thanks so much, Michelle. Okay. And now Dig is gonna pop back on to demonstrate um, the app actual vote that's been developed by Democracy Counts for uploading videos. All right, so um, actually actual vote um, simplifies the, uh, the whole capture of video as well as captures automatically GPS, your time and date, it compresses your video and uploads your video to our secure site. So it, it really kind of makes it very easy for uh, end users to be able to do this. So here's an example of the actual vote app. Um, the user is entering in a precinct number. It's going to get their GPS coordinates here. So that takes a few seconds to locate and then it's gonna give them the option to start videoing. So they'll, they'll do their video here. And uh, when they're done, they're just gonna tap the, the red button to stop that. We're not gonna watch the whole pull tape. I, I cut it off just to save you guys some time. And there we go, you'll hit accept. Then the uh, pull tape is gonna get uploaded automatically to our site, all right? Uh, that went by very quickly, but um, this is where the data goes. Um, so you'll be able to come to avdemocracycounts.org. We're gonna do a first pass screening on videos uh, that have been uploaded just to make sure that they're, they actually contain data, data and, they're, and they're usable. Um, but then from here, what can happen is, is that the, uh, the people doing the analysis will be able to come in here, they'll be able to look at a video. This is one of the videos that we looked at earlier that wasn't quite so great, but they can watch the video, um, flip it around if they need to, as well as get data from the video, like for example, where it was, and even do things like mapping it so they can see where it was in Florida in this case. Um, that's it. So I know I went through that pretty quick. Um, save your questions for later and uh, thanks again. Thanks, Dig. Now we could have thousands of people all over the country photographing and taking uh, videos of poll tapes, but how would we know where poll tapes are available? If let's say a candidate or election protection group is doing an investigation into an election or has concerns about whether the vote counts are accurate, wouldn't it be great if they could easily find out whether anyone had taken poll tapes in that location? Like to be able to say, look on a map and see dots where people have taken poll tapes. Well, I'm really excited about what our next speaker is going to show you. Deepak Puri is the founder of the Democracy Labs, which has a mapping project called See Something, Say Something. Welcome Deepak. I'm so, so glad you're here today. And you should be able to unmute your line now. Cool. Uh, thanks for having me, Emily. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I promise I will be very, very fast. So can you see my screen? Yes. <clears throat> All right. So very briefly, um, CSA 2020 is a general purpose app. And what are the characteristics of this? Number one, um, I'm an engineer. I worked in Silicon Valley. CSA does not require any download. It can be used with just a browser. It's csa2020.com. That gives us the ability to kind of change the information that's being captured. Second, um, this is technology I didn't develop. It comes from a 50 year old company. They have 9,000 employees and it's used by the government agencies, wildfires, hurricanes. We're just using it for voting. Second, the poll tape pictures that you collect are uploaded to a public drive. Could be Google, Box, and so on. So once volunteers put it up there, anyone can use it. And once it's uh, up there, we can map it. Esri specializes in two things, mapping and um, data analysis. We're just using it for this purpose. And finally, every submission is geotagged and timestamped. So let me show you how this works and then we can come back to it. So this is the form. Anyone can get to it by typing in csa2020.com. Um, what we've done is we've created a special category for poll tapes. So you click on this, you can type in the description and you can do one of two things. 
you can either, this is S3 technology, so it's not mine. It can run on a phone or laptop, tablet. If I am a pole monitor, I can take a picture and it automatically figures out where I am and it can geotag it. Or what I can do is I can type in an address and then, you know, I can kind of go in and say, oh, it's over here. So you could get really, really granular. And what happens is you'll notice it captures all this. Latitude and longitude. Yep, latitude and longitude, which is really important for, you know, auditability purposes. We also have the ability to, if someone can say, you know, if they know the name of the place, they can put it in there, state, city, time. Because the more information we can collect, the better it is for auditing purposes. If you have a picture, you can take a picture right there and then, or if you have it on your phone, you can just kind of attach it. From your computer. From your computer. And you can attach up to 10 photos in one go. If you wanted to, this is not really a focus, but you can also attach videos, add your name, phone number. If you are part of a group, say for instance, I'm part of NAACP or something else. All this information gets tagged to a record and we didn't originally develop this application for poll tapes, but we want to let people report all kinds of issues, voter intimidation, polling places, so on and so forth. But the fact that people can take a photo or a video, put a location and time on it and upload it, it works just as well for poll tapes. Now, once that's done, uh, I'm going to switch out of there. So all the information is shown on a map in real time. So as volunteers kind of put in their tapes, you'll see them pop up on this map. Um, for instance, this is something else, but you can see how um, you can attach a photo. This could be a photo of a poll tape uh, so on, or there are multiple photos. I'm just kind of whizzing through for the sake of time. Um, what happens then is, this is important. We take the information automatically because um, it goes through this process and it's put into a public drive. What that means is you could have 50 volunteers taking pictures as fast as they can. They come in and they are uploaded to a public drive. Right now we have an example with box.com so here are Can different- finish up in about 30 seconds? Yep. So the, the photos are kind of like uploaded here and you can see the poll tapes. One final thing is there's a free app, which we recommend called pen to print And what this does is you can simply point your picture, uh, the camera at a phone. You know, you could do this on the screen and what it'll do is literally take that picture like here digitize it and convert it into text. And then you can kind of paste it wherever you want. Uh, that's literally all there is to it. Thank you, Emily, back to you. Thanks so much. And I know that you've got a really full day and I see that there's at least one question in the chat that's directed to you. So if you need to leave, if you wanna address that question in the chat, rather than waiting till the Q&A time, you could do that. Okay, um, so thank you so much, Deepak. Yep. So Deepak moved us into the next phase on our little diagram that I stole from him with his permission and, and re changed the labels on, um, which is the analyzing the data. So CSA 2020 is preparing the data for analysis. And no matter which group you connect with to do this project, we wanna get all the photos and videos into CSA 2020 so they can be shared with attorneys and the media if there are discrepancies. And so groups on this call and others are going to be doing analysis of the data of the poll tape uh, uh, collected on the poll tapes. And that includes finding the precinct level results and comparing the numbers on the precinct on the poll tapes to the numbers announced by the county or the other jurisdiction that you're in. Um, you don't have to be a numbers cruncher to do some of this work. If you would like to volunteer, you can contact Protect Our Votes, which is Michelle's group, Democracy Counts, which is Digi's group, or Smart Elections, which I know has been posting their link in the chat. And we'll also include that in the follow-up email.
Um, if, you'd, if you're in North Carolina or have a specific interest in North Carolina, um, a wonderful group there called Transparent Elections NC is going to be doing North Carolina data. And links to all those groups will be in your follow-up email. But um, and I'm going to introduce Lynn from Democracy from I'm sorry from Transparent Elections NC in just a moment. Uh, for some of you, it's going to work fine to simply download the actual vote app and take video or take photos and upload them to the photo finish app or to CSA 2020. And for other people, this project will just be a better fit for you if you're connected with a group where you can ask questions, co coordinate who's going where, that sort of thing. Um, and of course, you can also assemble a group of friends in your county, divide up the polling places and especially the ones that you think are most likely to be messed with. Um, and often that is communities of color um, and go photograph or video on your own. Um, and, or you can connect with one of the groups whose leaders are going to introduce themselves now. So um, uh, for a brief introduction, we have Lynn Bernstein, the founder of Transparent Elections NC, again in North Carolina. She's been doing amazing work there, coordinating all sorts of, of work, observing the process of uh, processing of votes in in statewide and doing observing herself in her county so welcome lynn so much i'm so glad you're here and tell us a little bit about what your group is doing with poll tapes and how folks can connect with you if they're in north carolina or have a specific interest in north carolina hmm i'm hitting the ask to unmute button and i am it keep it's not letting me let you unmute let's see Let's try this. Try making you a co-host so that you can unmute yourself. Something seems to be going on. There you go. Did that work? Okay. Yes, that worked. All right. Thank you, Emily. Um, my name is Lynn Bernstein. Like Emily said, I'm the uh, founder of Transparent Elections North Carolina. And um, we are going to be all over North Carolina. Our group is primarily just doing poll tapes in North Carolina, but we are sharing our data and our, our poll tapes with, with anyone who wants them. Um, what the, the biggest thing you should know is to go to Transparent Elections North Carolina, so transparentelectionsnc.org, and from there you can find our Validate the Vote project. Um, it's important that you sign up and let us know what precinct you want to go uh, observe, to take these poll tapes at. Um, we will Next weekend, we're going to have a very specific to North Carolina training. We will arm you with what you need to know when you get to the precinct, um, give you what the law is, an affidavit form, um, take a video if you are denied seeing the poll tape. Um, we'll go through all that at our, at our North Carolina specific um, training next weekend. If you want to be part of that, please sign up at transparentelectionsnc.org. Um, we are actually going to the counties as well because 40% of our votes um, will be cast er through early voting. And those early voting machines do produce poll tapes and we intend to also image those poll tapes. Um, we're primarily going to be using the csay.com uploader. So it will be very easy for our volunteers to take pictures, um, upload them through csay.com. And we actually have a group of uh, people analyzing that data, we won't require you to digitize it. It's really simple for the volunteers who wanna take the pictures. You take the pictures, you upload it. If we have volunteers who really wanna use one of these apps for um, that you saw today, where that's perfectly fine with us, everyone's going to be sharing all the data. So um, if you would like to help out with North Carolina, again, transparentelectionsnc.org. Thanks, Emily. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then finally, I know we're a little bit over the hour. We're almost finished with the presentations and ready to go on to Q and A. Um, I do want to. I'm sorry. I'm having a little bit of a brain fart, and I can't remember. Michelle, did I let you do your second thing yet? Okay. All right. So Michelle is going to come from from photo finish from protect our votes is going to come back for just a moment and tell you a little bit more about what it means to work with them on their poll tapes project. Okay, thank you, Emily. 
I just wanted to quickly um, touch on one aspect of the photos as to what happens to them. After you upload the photos, um, I think it's in interesting to know that our photos are all on our website. So they go to our public viewer and anybody can see those and download those online. And what I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about is I'm gonna show you how you can connect with a group of volunteers in your area through the photo finish project of Protect Our Votes. This is our internal viewer with all of our, can you see that? Yes. Okay, with all of our tapes and anybody can download these. Um, they are online on our website and um, we're leaving them up there from the previous elections. So, um, but what I'm gonna talk about quickly is how to connect with a group in your area. And um, we have a national program. So it's a national pull tape review program, but there is, and this is a, a geographic overview of our volunteers and where they're located. So in some of these pins represent, you know, four or five volunteers, um, but we have them pretty much concentrated in the swing states. Um, I also have a list here to show you um, just a snapshot of our volunteers and of the states and the precincts and the counties where we are located. So and you're keeping track of who's doing what where? We do. All of our volunteers register in advance. So we know who they are. And this is, I'll get to that, um, the Slack communication that we have, but we have a lot of communication with our volunteers and they have communication with each other in advance. So these are the states that are being represented. We have 41 states where we have um, volunteers and photo finish. And we use Slack. So this answers the question of, um, you know, how to meet up with volunteers locally in our photo finish project. Uh, because we use the Slack program and we have a national organization in, are you seeing this presentation? Yeah, so um, so okay. let's not go into sh to sh showing Slack right now, just I think- No, I, I'm not gonna show Slack. Okay, okay, good. No, so I think it. people are pretty overwhelmed and, and no, we're also okay. over on time. Sure. Um, my only point here is that um, we have a national organization and we have local chat channels. So you can go to your state channels and do breakouts. And those are very important to do in advance because we have legal information on the different states where we're doing these poll tape reviews. And all states are different. You wouldn't believe it, but it, it's true. Um, some states require poll tapes to be posted. Others do not, but the counties choose to. So it's very important. And it's also really great to go into the local groups, either on a state level or even regional. So we have some regional coordinating groups and they have to get together and they write letters in advance to the county um, election officials to see if um, poll tapes are gonna be posted, how the laws are, to let them know that they're gonna be there. This is all important stuff. And thank you so um, much. It's a great way to you know do something nationally, but um, meet people locally. And we hope you sign up after the presentation uh, with Photo Finish. Great, and you're welcome to post that link into the chat if you'd like. Thank you so much, Michelle. And I want to thank all of our all of our panelists today for your helpful presentations. I know that it's a little bit confusing that we've got different groups doing similar things about different steps along the way. Again, the email that you'll get is going to help you sort this out and clarify it to figure out what the option is that makes best for you. So we've talked today about what poll tapes are and why they're important evidence of how voters voted. And we've gone over how you can find out where to go to photograph or videotape them, how to do it, and what to do with your photo photos and videos. We've shared with you that you can help analyze the data if you want to do more than simply photograph tapes on your own. Of course, another way to do more is to get more people involved and share this video with them to um, or teach them what you've learned. And how you can, we've talked about how you can connect with a group that's doing work in your area. So I would love to hear in the chat who here is going to go photograph poll tapes in at least one place on election night on November 3rd. Fantastic. Great. I would, I'm thrilled to see that. And the next thing I'd like you to post in the chat is what your takeaways are from today's training. So will you post into the chat something that you've learned that you didn't know before today? As I mentioned earlier, photographing poll tapes is only one of the ways that we can work to protect vote counts and to validate them if they're accurate and to expose them if they're not. 
in Scrutineers, which is the organization that I lead, there are a number of other projects we're working on around the country. We believe that voter confidence is really important and that voter confidence grows from election transparency. So we're working to make elections more transparent. We don't have time for me to talk about the other projects we're doing um, unless you ask questions about them in the Q&A time. But I do hope you'll come and join Scrutineers, which is a growing community online community of people dedicated to election protection. In Scrutineers, you will find more trainings on different topics related to election protection and resources to help you take action. There are, are groups that where you can connect with others in your area or working on similar projects. You can get your questions answered there and you can, uh, there's a, a $1.99 one-time membership fee, which is basically to keep bots and trolls out of the site. So, um, that's all it costs to join and it's only one time. So we will we hope that you will go to scrutineers.org and join, join us today. Um, we have our poll worker training coming up on Sunday. We've got a lot of stuff going on right now and more will be happening after the election. So it's a, it's a lively place and a really lovely growing community. All of our panelists today are members of Scrutineers and they can be private messaged on our platform. If you have other speaking opportunities for them or media exposure that you can get them, it would be great to reach out to them. So I wanna thank all of our panelists and all of our audience for being here today, for bearing with us if it got confused for paying good attention and especially for caring about our democracy. This election is not going to protect itself. It needs all of us on board. So, and thanks also to Melissa and Kelly for help on the back end today. So we're going to take questions and um, most of our panelists, I believe, are still on the call. So you're welcome to ask questions to any of them. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to jump right into the Q&A session that was at the end of this training, you can find Find that on the election protection training playlist right here on our channel. To find out more about Scrutineers and how you can participate, please visit us at scrutineers.org. To review, what's most important is that you find out if the poll tapes are posted in your area, take clear photos or videos of the poll tapes, and then upload them so that they can be compared with the official election results. Please comment below to let us know any questions or insights that came up for you as you watched this video. If you're a poll worker, we have another training available on this playlist that's specifically an election protection training for poll workers. You have such an important role to play in protecting the elections and we want to make sure that you have the information you need to do it well. So you can find that training up here. You can learn more about Scrutineers in this video. Until next time, thanks for watching and let's protect the elections because they are not going to protect themselves.